Get Wrecked is a multiplayer game mode for Arma 3 designed by Sly. It won third place in this year's Make Arma Not War contest hosted by Bohemia Interactive, the studio behind Arma 3. Get Wrecked challenges players to create, customize, drive, survive, and of course, destroy. Construct wheeled armored behemoths using a variety of building parts, then fight to the death in a race zone of your choice. It's a creative vehicle combat sandbox for Arma 3 multiplayer and a mod that's in early alpha release state. It's currently designed for small games of up to 12 players. In this video, I will show you how to get started playing Get Wrecked and hopefully help you not get wrecked when you're battling your friends. One note is that Get Wrecked does not re require any add-ons to play. You can subscribe to the Steam Workshop page to get updates, but that is not entirely necessary. When you connect to the server, you will receive the mission file required to play. To get started, you will need to find a server to play on. If you go on the official website, getwrecked.info, you will see a list of servers. Also, if you filter Get Wrecked in the Arma 3 server browser, this may yield results as well. If you're looking to host a server, the mission file will be available in the Steam Workshop. Once you join the server, you will find yourself in the workshop. From here, you will create your vehicle before deploying onto the battlefield. You can use any of the pads to get started. Walk up to the yellow sign and use your scroll wheel to click Create. Using in-game money, you can unlock a multitude of vehicles from here. Once you have a vehicle on your pad, try looking around for an object to attach. There will be some free objects scattered about the workshop. Use your scroll wheel to move the object and scroll again to attach the object to your vehicle. One note, if you need to rebind these controls, open your map by pressing M, then click on key bindings. You can reference this if you wish to set up custom controls for building, etc. I personally don't mind the scroll wheel option. Now go over to the shop billboard and click shop. Buy a few items here and then attach them to your vehicle. I'll go over more in depth what the weapons and modules do in a little bit. Before you go to save your vehicle, use the scroll wheel on the vehicle to set up some key bindings. Weapons can be bound to left mouse click or a custom button. To disable mouse control on these weapons, double click the mouse icon near each one. Nitro boost and other modules will need to be bound to a key as well. Notice you have a few other options to bind here too. Don't get intimidated by this. Once you are in game, you will see your key binds at all times so you won't forget. Once you have finished, go back to the yellow vehicle service terminal and click save. Key bindings will not save unless you save your vehicle after changing them. Save files are local and tied to your in-game profile. Can't think of a name? Click the random name generator on the right side for it to generate a name for you. Some of these are quite amusing. Let's assume that you have finished your vehicle and you're ready to deploy. Go to the vehicle service terminal and click deploy. This will teleport you to one of a few locations available for combat. If your vehicle is not on the pad, you will first need to click Load and select your vehicle. Once you are in-game, you will notice your keybinds show up on the right-hand side of your screen. If something does not show up, you can access the same control menu in-game by scrolling and going to Settings. From here, you can also unflip your vehicle. You will want to be in third-person perspective and double-hit Left-Alt so you can aim with your mouse for your weapons. Watch for the markers for the pads that can refill your ammo, repair, or refuel your vehicle. Additionally, there can be supply drops with either power-ups or nasty surprises. These are indicated by parachuting pallets that will be marked by smoke. That's all for the basics, now to move on to some more advanced building and tactics. First I'll look at some stats and show you what to look for when selecting your vehicle. As you can see, this truck has two weapons and seven modules available for use. You can see the mass of the vehicle here as well as the fuel capacity. You want to completely cover your vehicle to protect it from damage, but the heavier the materials, the slower your vehicle will go. The building parts that you select for your vehicle will protect it depending on the armor of the piece that you select. If the part becomes damaged enough, it will be destroyed, leaving your vehicle with a weak spot. Once you respawn, the parts will be as you save them. Like we were saying before, having heavy armor will protect you, but will also make you very slow. A way to counteract this is with Nitro Boost. Nitro Boost is a necessity for most vehicles because a moving target is harder to hit naturally. When choosing weapons, you need to consider your strategy, whether to attack from range or be more aggressive. The mortar, lock-on missile, guided missile, rail and railgun will do big damage from a distance, but can be thwarted or avoided. The 50 cal, GMG HE, rocket pods, 
and flamethrower lend themselves to a more aggressive strategy. A new component to get wrecked is the melee attachments which do damage in different ways. The concrete pylons will do more, more damage depending on the velocity of your vehicle or the faster you hit someone. The metal spikes will deal damage depending on how many spikes you have attached and can pick up vehicles and flip them easier. Or if you have more metal spikes they'll do less damage per spike. But you can still flip someone with them. And the wooden battering ram does the same amount of damage no matter how many you have attached to your vehicle. Feel free to mix and match depending on what is most effective for you. Regarding deployables, the bag of explosives has the power of a satchel charge with a remote detonator switch controlled by you. Proximity mines can be quite deadly to an opponent who is chasing you. Combine this with the caltrops which temporarily disable an opponent's wheels and you can make your enemies have a very bad day. The smoke generator is important as it will put out a fire from a flamethrower or laser and also defeat a lock-on from a missile. The fuel tank and ammo container speak for themselves, added capacity for your vehicle if it needs it. Flamethrower and nitro tend to use a lot of fuel, so keep that in mind. In electronics, the cloaking device temporarily hides your vehicle. The magnetic coil will push your enemies away, and conversely the electromagnet will pull them closer to you. Use the electromagnet in addition to other traps for hilarious results. The teleport pad is a new item can be used to send your enemies into the twilight zone or to teleport yourself in between strategic locations. They can be placed anywhere, they have a time limit, and there's a limit of two per module. I want to make a quick note at the end here about the command exclamation point send money. This is helpful if you have a new friend who is starting out and you can send them a little bit of cash so they can buy some vehicles and weapons and such. Use the command exclamation point send money and then the player's name in chat and then it will ask you the amount to send. I believe I covered what I wanted to get across but if there are questions feel free to ask. I'm going to show you some highlights from a recent stream of mine to close things out. Thanks for watching and check out getrec.info for the main website and twitter at getrec.a3. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys will support this awesome game mode and spread the word. Cheers. <laughs> oh, get wrecked! Oh my god! That was I fucking brutal, 16. dude. What happened? Yeah, I don't know what it is. Oh! Yeah. Oh, it gave you it gave you credit for it. Nice. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. If it didn't take me so fucking long to make the. <gasps> oh, shit! I don't fucking know what just happened. <laughs> oh shit. Fuck. Oh no. Oh, that's it for me. I'm that's curtains for me, boys. Oh, good shot, whoever that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Use the cloak as a countermeasure, Jesus. Oh, I think the end's not for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you fucking went flipping in here. Jesus. I, I want to kind of include it in this to an extent, but... Yeah, yeah. A lot of the weapons, like, don't... Don't work so well, let's see. But I'd like it so that there's like um maybe like a shipyard or a dockyard and you can mm. deploy there instead of the workshop and then from there yeah. you can go to different zones on all this. It'd be kinda cool.
get wrecked doesn't necessarily mean just oh, shit. kind of like vehicle walk where it can be kind of yeah. like any wreck really. Oh, sure. But... close range guided missiles <laughs> I forget what my time button is oh shit man <laughs> what the fuck just happened oh my god <laughs> <laughs> uh.